So this week I'm gonna share my process again for the render weekly. It was about hanger, so code hangers. And the main thing, the main one I did, I did a few different ones and I explored and had some fun with it as well. But the main one I did is the one you see on screen, which is kind of a puzzle version of a hanger, like a, a code hanger that you can disassemble and put together if needed. It's like for people on the go. Um, here you can see my final render setup. Pretty simple, basic, just a plane, some kind of knob um, and the, the code hanging there. Here's a second one. I didn't end up using that one, just but it's basically the same thing. So yeah, um, I'm gonna show you the process, how I got to this point. So I started by sketching in my sketchbook and here I basically um, try to simplify the idea and get to the bottom of it. What is it, what is it and why is it basically doing? Basically the idea of the kind of the puzzle coat hanger is for people that are on the go, they need something light, they have like jackets, maybe some kind of suit jacket or like a blouse that they need to keep wrinkleless when they maybe have some meetings or meet some people. Um, so it's a pocket hanger that you can take with you. And it's basically split up into a few different smaller segments that you can assemble and and put together when needed and put away when you don't need it. So here I'm just trying and trying to understand how to split it up best. The main thing why I'm doing these doodles and here I don't care about like aesthetics or something is to understand because in in our brains everything works in some way. So you have to draw it to see if it, if it actually works. The brain fills in the gaps. Um, so you have to draw it to actually see if it works. I've I learned this in a in a master class I did with like a, with a Dutch illustrator, Art Goodappel, and he basically mentioned just draw it, draw everything. Don't think about it, just draw it, because the brain fills in the gaps and makes everything work. Whereas on the paper, um, the brain can't fill it in, so you have to make it work. Here I'm drawing like a little kind of a case, like you would put your glasses in. You have like you might have that that coat hanger in some kind of nicely designed case, which I didn't end up doing yet, but I might might go ahead. So yeah, that's my thought process for the, the puzzle hanger, basically. And I'm gonna show you my process now. Okay, so we're in, in Blender. Just gonna delete everything for good measure. <laughs> and I'm gonna add in a cylinder and I basically just blocked in an idea which is similar with the one I just sketched out but in a cylindrical form and where the different parts like slide into each other and the main idea came from the experience I had when putting together uh, a tent and in the tent you have these um, structural beams and you can elongate them by pulling them out and they're connected with some cord in, in between some elastic cord so I had that, this idea of like, maybe you can make a coat hanger with that kind of idea, having an elastic cord in, in running in the center, and then they stack on top of each other and you can basically put them together small in a kind of like a telescope way. Another idea was, which I'm building right now, is, is based on the idea that the arms can move, either stretching out um, sideways, which I'm trying to do here, which I found then didn't work at least I didn't like it that much um, and then I tried a different way which is where their arms flip upwards the idea with this one was that it would allow to save space so yeah I modeled some kind of quick mo mechanism not really worried about how it works just like imagining needs some way to flip upwards um, and that's it again I'm here in like a very quick early stage blocking in some some ideas um, and for this one compared to last week's it was more about the mechanics of how it could work so you'll see me more doing kind of flipping and rotating around an axis to see
I laid them out in a process render, but I didn't pursue any of those ideas. So now you can see me laying out the different the, the first piece for the, the puzzle idea. I'm basically using the knife cut tool to cut into the, the mesh, just making the, the, those modules and then move them around to, to like test out how this structure could work. Moving around, um, moving the vertices around quickly without being worried too much about topology. Using the knife tool, knife project, um, extrude, and here I locked the different axes. I didn't want to, um, want, didn't want the parts to rotate. And again, as I said before, I'm just trying out the mechanisms and how this would work. I know it, this could like, if you want to do it properly with some kind of rig, but for what I'm doing here, for the purpose of just trying to get some rough understanding of how it works, I think that's good enough for me. Um, just here I'm blocking in some some kind of knobs that would hold them together, some clips. At that point I didn't I didn't have like figured out yet how these would hold together. Here I'm just making the the top piece where where you hang it. Same same thing again, just using the knife protect and cutting into the mesh, which is quick and, and dirty. It's not the best topology, but it, it does the job for, for this stage. I'm also using the, the the origin point, so I'm moving the origin point around so, so I can rotate it and don't have to rig up anything or like make some bones or things. The output from this kind of exploration phase, I, I made like a little little render. Um, but that's basically where it is. I decided on the puzzle idea and move forward with, with that one. Before going into the proper model, I, for the triangle shape to stay put, there needs to be some kind of mechanism that stops them from rotating too far in the negative to the bottom. So here you see me like just blocking in that kind of shape, which I then will model a little bit better in the final piece. But this again, just like a little mock-up piece, you could do that in cardboard or, or whatever you have, but it works as well in Blender as well. So now I'm putting like a generic coat hanger shape so I get the size right and then just for the beginning and then I, I started modeling with subdivision surface but still using the knife tool because that worked and just needs you need, just need to then re, re topologize like make it a little nicer with the knife tool cutting in and, and, and just aiming for quartz which I don't always get but you it depends you, you have to it depends um, how how important that piece is is gonna if you're gonna see it at some point and so you have to make decisions you don't have like i if i can i try to use quartz all the time but if it would take like 10 <laughs> minutes for me to figure out how i can make that triangle quad which is probably just practice and i should do it more um then i'll, I'll do a quad if not just just leave a triangle and then i i basically basically calculate like how, if I'm going to see it, if it's going to be visible in the final render, if not, then I don't care about it too much. But obviously I tried to have as clean a topology as possible. Here you will see me doing that rear mechanism, which you're never going to see, like at the end, you I'm never going to show in any render, but it was at this point, it was important to me. So I could, 
could like at least with like good conscience say well that would that would work this way and and would behave in that in that in that way in that manner and, and yeah you can see it's not ideal topology but it's it's doing the trick for what it what i needed to do and because i'm going to split the pieces up later um i don't worry too much about like continuation of the different topologies because they're going to be separate pieces which i can then take care of individually i just try to get the main things okay so it, it there's no like big shading issues later on but for now it's it's good enough for me Here I'm duplicating the pieces and trying to get the rest of the the modules um, down to see how they work and where I need to to put them. But because because I did like the little mock-up before, it was quite quick and easy to put the pieces in place. Here I I I forgot to make a little. Um, lip at the bottom just so if like any clip that goes in there um sits tightly but again it's not going to be seen on any render and it's not that important in this section you can see me splitting up the the different modules into these into the separate pieces and in the middle you have these kind of um, metallic clips where they lock into each other and i'm using basically i'm just using a little like three vertex, like a, a, a curve, and to basically measure out. It's it's not it's not the most um, scientific way of doing it, but it's quick and it it did the trick. I played with the three D cursor and the origin points to get the centers, um, and and try to make that work quickly and easy. Here I'm building the top part, which I I tried to do it like in the same way as I did in in the mock-up, but then I uh, I figured like that's not the right shape for it, so you're gonna see me later like deleting that again, and putting in a circle basically, and with that circle, make it a more more controlled curve and a more aesthetic one, aesthetically pleasing one as well. Um, but that's how I started out, and then. I tried to make it work, try to play around with it, probably spend too much time on it. And because I'm gonna here shift it over because it's like, oh I need that can't be it needs to be in the center. And then it looked weird. Um so I found like okay, just I'm gonna put in a circle and use that circle as the, the main shape to to guide that that hook bit on the top. I basically connected them, fill them fill them in and be done with that piece. I used again the, the knife tool to cut into that shape and to basically have like a one a knob extrude out of it that then holds in place the the other pieces that you clip onto them. I'm I'm splitting it down in the middle, and I imagine it to be some kind of um, flexible piece, either out of some kind of some plastic, flexible enough so you can like push it through and push it out again, some kind of clip mechanism, and that's what you see me doing here at the moment. I put in a generic wood texture because I, in the beginning I thought like I might do it out of wood but then after seeing it, it I didn't like it so then later on I changed my mind until in the final render I used some transparent here I built the other clips for the pieces which I see the that some of the modules have them integrated all to, already into them and you clip on the other pieces in terms of like and usability him changing the material to some kind of shiny plastic and 
basically the the hanger is done and now I'm splitting them up into this into the individual pieces I'm parenting the different objects to the to the main pieces and have it have it basically done Here you can see the again the final setup of the render with the plastic and the and the, the, the clips in a different material. I hope you enjoyed that one. It's a little shorter and I think I like I like it that format better because I can narrate over it and it makes more sense. You can follow along easier than like a 50 minute video where it's completely sped up. But again, leave please leave a, a comment if you like and and thank you for stopping by again. Bye.